So Jesus says to me, back to the parable, I've kept you out of jail, I've acquitted you, and now I want to give you a new driver's license. <laughs> My character. A title of righteousness. And if you're willing to receive it, you will experience the second blessing of what this word means. Righteousness. Is that biblical? Amen. Let's go and read the first scripture that we read, the verse, first verse of the scripture that we read this morning. Romans 5, 17. So then, as through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men, even so through one act of righteousness there resulted justification. I'm sorry, I apologize. Verse 17. For if by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one, much more those who, here it is, receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of what? Righteousness will reign on this earth in life through the one, Jesus Christ. The word here, righteousness, in Romans 5, 17, is the same word that Jesus used in Matthew 3, 15. Speaking of an imputed title, in my parable, a driver's license, reflecting Jesus' character. Do you like what we're doing so far? Amen. Now, for the third definition of the word that we're looking at this morning. Now that I received this new driver's license, reflecting Jesus' character of righteousness, does that make me a good driver? Not in my case. Let's look at the third word that we're studying this morning. Let's turn to Romans chapter 8. We're in Romans 5 right now. Let's turn to the right to Romans chapter 8. And I'm going to read the last sentence of verse 3 and then all of the verse 4. Here we go. Romans 8, beginning with the last sentence of verse 3. He, Christ, condemns sin in his flesh. Verse 4. In order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. The word righteous here is spelled, yep, D-I-K-A-I-O, and then we add the suffix N-A, dikaioma. Do you know what that means? Imparted righteousness. The title, my new driver's license, is imputed righteousness. It's given to me. Now, he says to me, I got something better for you. I now want to give you access to what I call the designated driver that I used when I was down on planet Earth, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that you never have to worry about what? Driving this body of yours and breaking any laws. I'm not inventing anything, folks. I'm going to the the detail of showing you what these words mean. We're talking grammar here, okay? I call the Holy Spirit Jesus' designated driver. Is there biblical evidence that it's possible for human beings like me with a sinful nature to live the kind of life that Jesus lived when he was on this earth 2,000 years ago. Is there biblical evidence? I'm not interested in all of the opinions and the garbage that we have read and heard about since we were children. Is there biblical evidence that it's possible to live the life that Jesus lived 2,000 years ago? Is it possible for me with a sinful nature to live that life? Turn with me to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation Chapter 19, last book in the Bible. Revelation 19. When you get there, I 
again. Stay ready, and I will read two verses for you this time. Again, Revelation 19. Beginning with verse 7. Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready. Oh, how did she make herself ready? Let's find out in verse 8. And it was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. The word righteous here is the same word that the Apostle Paul uses in Romans 8, verse 4. Is that good news? So there's biblical evidence that it is possible to live the life that Jesus lived on this earth, me, with a sinful nature. This word, dikaioma, means imparted righteousness. But it can only happen if you and I choose to use the same designated driver that Jesus used when he was on this earth. And then it becomes a guarantee. And until you and I understand and appreciate the meanings of these three words that we have briefly touched on, we will never be willing to accept the robe of righteousness, which is the only garment that is acceptable for you to wear at Jesus' wedding. How many of you would like to attend Jesus' wedding? So what have we learned this morning? Jesus has acquitted us legally of the debt that Adam and Eve brought upon us. Number two, he has qualified for a driver's license when he was here, and now he offers that driver's license to each one of us, which re represents his what? His character. But that's not all. He now says, at least in Chuck's case, he says, you should learn by now not to trust yourself. So I'm going to give you my designated driver to drive this body of yours. And if I do that, then Jesus' promise in Revelation 3.21 can become a reality Amen. in our lives. Revelation 3, Revelation 21, I'm sorry, Revelation 3, verse 21, where Jesus says to each one of us, He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So it's not only possible to live a Christian life in my sinful body if I accept these two blessings, especially the designated God of the Holy Spirit to drive this body of mine for as long as I have life on this earth, as Jesus chose to turn himself over to the designated God, the Holy Spirit. It is my prayer that each of you will recognize the significance of the meaning of these three words. And allow Jesus' designated tribe to make them a reality in each of your lives. God bless you. Our closing hymn is number 522. Live out thy life within me. I'm sorry, 316. 316. Live out thy life within me. Number 316.
understand intellectually, but appreciate from the heart the significance of very, very important words in the, in the Bible. Help us to appreciate what we have studied this morning so that the understanding that we have of your word will always be to motivate us, to show the hope that is within us, that you have acquitted us, you have given us and offered us your character, you were willing to accept it, and now you offer your Holy Spirit to drive these sinful bodies of ours, to reflect your character and to witness to the world that the good news of the gospel is that sin has been conquered. Not only in you by faith, but as we learn to live by faith, you will also conquer sin in each of our lives so that your name can be glorified. We thank you for answering these requests because we ask in Jesus' name.